Now, if you follow my channel, you know I'm a big fan of the business line that Dell produces. Of course, that's the Latitude line that we know and love. And one of the things they like to focus on is incredible battery life. And of course, when Dell hit me up to check out their all new Latitude 9510 2-in-1, I quickly jumped on it because they're not only promising a premium all metal build, updated 10th generation processors, a gorgeous display, but they're also touting epic battery life. They're claiming 30 plus hours on a single charge. Now, of course, that's in the most ideal situation. You won't really get 30 hours in everyday use, but the battery life that I did get with this is pretty phenomenal. Hey everybody, it's Andrew, and this is my review of the Dell Latitude 9510 2-in-1, all new for 2020, coming up. Want to see more videos like this? Why not hit that subscribe button and make sure you hit that notification bell. This way you'll be alerted every time I upload a new video. Make sure you follow me on social media, especially Twitter and Instagram. I'll post all the updates on those platforms. And today's video is brought to you by our new members who have contributed this month to help support the channel. If you're interested in becoming a new member, hit that join button below. And of course, in the interest of transparency and full disclosure, I'm not being paid by Dell, I'm not being sponsored by Dell. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own, and no one is seeing this video before its release. This review unit was provided by Dell, and once this review is done, I will be sending it back. The starting price for the Latitude 9510 2-in-1 is $18.99. I'll put the link below for more information and where you can buy it. Now, my review unit from Dell comes in at $2,627 as configured. Yes, it is pricey, but however, this is geared towards businesses who tend to buy these in bulk and often get pretty big discounts from Dell. It has an all-metal premium design and at 3.3 pounds or 1.5 kilograms, this is definitely portable to take with you on the go. Now I covered the ports in my unboxing video, but for those that didn't see it, on the left side you get an HDMI 2.0 port, two Thunderbolt 3 ports, and a micro SD card slot for storage expansion. Moving over to the right side, you get a Kensington lock port, a 3.5mm audio jack, and a USB-A port to round out all the ports on this 2-in-1. And that's a pretty good port selection. Now as far as user upgradeability is concerned, it's easy to get inside this laptop. All you need to do is remove the T5 Torx screws, pop off the bottom plate, and you're in. Now once inside, the bad news is the RAM is soldered into the motherboard, and even further bad news, it is LPDDR3 RAM limited to 16 gigabytes of RAM. You don't get the option of 32 gigabytes of RAM. Now, of course, I would have liked to have seen LPDDR4 RAM, and I would have liked the option of at least 32 gigabytes of RAM not to be limited to 16. So that's a negative on that front. But the good news is there are two M.2 2230 SSD slots that are user accessible and upgradable. So that's good news on that front. And the one they give you has good reads and writes. Now this has Wi-Fi 6 along with Bluetooth 5.0 all working on that front and it has the optional LTE that's available with an eSIM which allows switching between carriers without the need to swap out SIM cards. And the good news is 5G is expected very soon so stay tuned for that. Okay, let's talk about what I consider the star of the show, and that's the battery life. There are two battery options available, a 52 watt hour battery and the larger 88 watt hour battery, and that's the one that my review unit has, and I can say it's pretty phenomenal. It did a whopping 19 hours and 37 minutes on my continuous web surfing test over Wi-Fi at 150 nits, outlasting its competition by far. Now, there is an optional 90-watt USB-C power adapter. That's the one that they provided me, and it does support Dell's Express Charge, which gives you 35% in just 15 minutes. You're looking at a full charge in around an hour and 45 minutes, and that's really good. And let's talk about the other star of the show, and that would be its display. What we're looking at here is a 15-inch Full HD display with a resolution of 1920 by 1080. That's a Full HD resolution with really deep blacks, nice white points, good contrast, and it does have some good color accuracy with a 1.75 Delta E score, and it covers the color gamut really well. You're looking at 98% sRGB, 74% Adobe RGB, 75% of the P3 wide color gamut, and 68% NTSC, making this a good choice for those creative professionals that do Lightroom, Photoshop, and of course, video editing. 
Now this is a super low power display that Dell claims will get up to 400 nits in terms of brightness. I actually measured 394 nits. And since it has an anti-reflective coating, it also is a good choice for both indoor and outdoor use. You don't get any unnecessary glare or reflections, and I like that. And this display is also covered in Gorilla Glass 6DX, making it a little bit more scratch resistant. And they managed to really slim down the bezels, giving off a nice, sleek, and modern look. You gotta love it. That's not something we see very often with a business focused laptop. So, this is the front facing camera on the Dell Latitude 9510. It's a 720p, 30 frames per second. Windows Hello camera, that means you can log in with face recognition. I think it's good for Skype, good for Zoom. Not the best I've ever seen, certainly not the worst, but again, it will definitely get the job done, especially when you're on the go, once this pandemic is over. And of course, when you're working from home, this of course becomes of utmost importance. Let me know in the comment section below what you think about it. I am curious to know. And it supports express sign-in. What this does is it detects your presence when you're near, logs you in automatically. And when you walk away, it logs you out. That's pretty cool and it works surprisingly well. Okay, let's talk performance. What we're looking at here is the Intel Core i7-10810U. That's a Comet Lake processor, of course, a 10th generation Comet Lake processor with UHD graphics. That's integrated graphics. Unfortunately, there's no dedicated GPU option like you get in other 15-inch laptops. Now, as far as gaming is concerned, you can play some games. Of course, if you lower the settings, you will definitely get playable frame rates. Of course, you could always add an external GPU via the Thunderbolt 3 port, and that will definitely aid in playing games on this of course as far as video editing is concerned you could do things such as 1080p video editing I wouldn't really do 4k video editing everyday tasks such as Microsoft Office email web browsing all worked well now when it comes to thermals I ran my stress test on it and what it did was got up to 96 degrees Celsius and it was running up until then to about 4 gigahertz drop it down to about 3.2 gigahertz once it hit that 96 degrees Celsius temperature and you'll notice that single fan for cooling and it didn't get too loud so it wasn't terribly annoying and that's pretty good but you will notice it under heavy load it's just not too loud and since this is a two-in-one convertible you can put it into the tent mode great for recipes in the kitchen consuming media same goes for stand mode and of course you could use it in tablet mode and that's great for use with the pen and speaking of the pen, it's a separate accessory and it actually worked well, giving you 4,096 levels of pressure sensitivity, good for taking notes, good for sketching out artwork, and it's powered by one quadruple A battery. Now they also sent over their Premier sleeve. It's a really nice sleeve for a 15 inch laptop. It's a nice premium feel with excellent quality and the fit is really good with this laptop. And it also has a place to store the pen. So that's an added bonus right there. And as far as the keyboard is concerned, I really do like it. It has really good tactile feedback, good key travel, and it does have a multi-stage backlight, allowing you to get work done in a dark room and a dimly lit environment. This is also a very comfortable keyboard for extended periods of typing. It all worked well. And it also has a glass precision touchpad that was really responsive. Two finger scrolling was buttery smooth and all the Windows 10 gestures worked as advertised, all working well on that front. Let's give it a listen. Hey everybody, it's Andrew, and this is my unboxing and first look at Dell's all-new Latitude 9510, a two-in-one convertible, all-new for 2020. Coming up. Okay, let's bring it all home. Can I recommend the Dell Latitude 9510 2-in-1 here for 2020? And the answer is a resounding yes. And the reason being is this has a bright, vibrant, 15 inch display. I like that express sign in with the proximity sensor that worked really well. Outstanding build quality and design with that brushed aluminum metal design that actually really gives off a premium feel and look. Excellent keyboard with a precision touchpad. Surprisingly good quad speakers. I really like the top firing speakers that really worked well. Epic battery life out of that 88 watt hour option. Of course, that's the one I would go with. eSIM support and 5G support coming very soon. Active pen support, which I absolutely 
love, of course, to take notes, sketch out artwork. It's a nice option right there. Negatives, of course, no 4K display option, no discrete GPU option as you'd get with other 15-inch laptops. And of course, this is expensive. But don't forget, this is geared towards businesses. They tend to buy these in bulk and would receive discounts from Dell. But there are sales on these and you want to keep your eye out on the link below because I'll put the latest pricing if you're in the market for a really good 15-inch convertible 2-in-1 that checks all the boxes. I'm going to give this a score of 95%, making the Dell Latitude 9510 2-in-1 worth your money and earning my editor's choice for the 15-inch business convertible laptop category so far for 2020. So what do you think about this bad boy, the Latitude 9510, another Latitude with some attitude. This has the most epic battery life I've ever seen. We're looking at 19 plus hours. I kid you not, on everyday use, this thing is a battery beast. This might be the battery king for a while. I haven't seen anything come close to this in a long time. And that's a pretty nice testament to Dell with what they did with this, putting an 88 watt hour battery under the hood. Now, of course, you're not only getting epic battery life, you're getting good performance out of that 10th generation processor. It's also a V Pro in this one as well. First time I got a chance to check out V Pro on a business laptop running a 10th gen from Intel. And so far, I'm really impressed with it. Every day, you Microsoft Office, email, web browsing. It handled everything with a breeze. You could do 1080p video editing. Of course, 4K video editing. There's no dedicated GPU in this. It's only got the integrated graphics, uh, UHD graphics. And I would say it's okay for everyday use. But if you want to do graphics, processor intensive tasks, you might want to invest in a GPU or an eGPU rather uh, that connects via the Thunderbolt 3 ports that this does have. Of course, it's not cheap. This is a premium business class laptop. And so you will pay uh, to have it. Now, the display, of course, is excellent on this. Uh, really bright, really crisp, really good colors, very vibrant, of course, and it does co cover the color gamut really well. So really excellent display. I actually thought it was an OLED display for its sheer vibrancy when I first unboxed it. Pretty interesting, of course. Everything else on this is really good in terms of the ports. I'm really happy with that as well. Now, of course, businesses won't blink an eye at the price tag. They buy these things in bulk. So that's something you want to keep in mind. Now, a couple of negatives that I did notice on this, you cannot upgrade the RAM, it's soldered into the motherboard, and you can upgrade the SSD, which is good news. It's using that smaller SSD, but, but still readily available on the open market. But I'm curious to know what you think. Let me know in the comments section below. So please hit the like button, please subscribe, please share this video. Don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section below. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know if there's a device or something out there you think I should review. I'll do my best to try to make that happen. Don't forget to check me out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course my website, amdtechreviews.com. So until next time, this is Andrew from AMD Tech. See ya.